Howdy, what's up, people? Uh, let me straight away start off with the browser preview and uh, demonstrate how the zooming actually works with CSS3. Okay, uh, while the screen uh, cast is actually on, the screen recording is actually on, the animation that you see is a little choppy. That's uh, probably because my computer is uh, not, uh, you know, uh, doesn't have the resources to. Uh, record the screen as well as uh, you know show the uh, animation simultaneously smoothly but if you check it on your systems it will be uh, not choppy the way it is right now should be pretty smooth right so you see a, a transition it's a width transition wherein when I actually hover over the thumb the uh, corresponding bigger image uh, expands width wise and height wise and so also note people that the thumb actually shrinks just that wee bit just that little bit just a tad not too much just letting us know that this is the image that has been hovered upon all right and uh, subtle uh, box shadow effect all around the bigger image it's actually I've used a multiple or dual uh, box shadows out here people since I've used CSS3 properties ideally I should uh, use vendor prefixes with the code which I haven't see nowadays most uh, browsers can handle these CSS3 properties without vendor prefixes see there, there are a lot of CSS3 properties box sizing transition etc box shadow etc but um, we should ideally use after checking the browser compatibility dash mouse dash dash webkit dash dash or dash dash uh, uh, MS dash etc but I've actually skipped them since most modern contemporary browsers can handle it in 2014 all right uh, but ideally you should check that out and for older browsers you should ideally uh, use vendor prefixes which I have skipped but you shouldn't all right there's another way you can go prefix free there's a JS file available off the net you can just uh, link up to that JS file prefix free dot min dot js it's available off the internet and then you don't need to do it so you see what what works best for you all right now uh, let's see how exactly have I uh, worked on this example as always people let's first uh, understand the HTML now there are three images out here uh, pick and pick big are the two different classes these two classes are very important people see the f the first image and the second image are actually duplicate the first image is visible while the second isn't why the second is not visible is simply because the second image has been attached a class of pick big if I deliberately you know, change the class pick big this way okay and if I save the document up bring the browser up now and if I refresh see what happens uh, you'll notice that the smaller thumb has a corresponding bigger image this is the smaller thumb and it has a corresponding bigger image it's, it's actually going down simply because the browser width is not enough so a smaller picture and a, a bigger Im uh, Im corresponding bigger image out here so the very reason let me say control Z thrice one two three okay the very reason the class pick big was attached was to make sure that the corresponding bigger image sitting next to the thumb see this this W1 JPG is the uh, it's acting like the thumb this is the corresponding bigger image actually if you see these are duplicate images why one is looking small and the other is looking big is simply because we are playing around with the width property let me show that to you with the class big I've made sure that the width is 200 by 150 and if I actually check the original image w1 w2 w3 let's check the size out 800 600 pixels 800 by 600 pixels width and height that is 800 by 600 pixels width and height that is but when I actually use the width and height of 200 150 I'm ensuring that I'm crunching it to one fourth the size so this class pick is ensuring that they are condensed in size now what pick 
big is actually doing it's making sure that the width is actually zero that's causing it to go invisible so the class pick is causing the original image to act like the thumb so basically we are condensing it down to one fourth the size the pick big class is actually making the corresponding bigger image the original image actually disappear simply because we've used the width uh, and set it to a zero px okay uh, let's understand you know the the four classes that I've actually used one by one so you see the HTML is pretty simple there are six images in fact this is the duplicate of this this is the duplicate of this and this is the duplicate of this this acts like the thumb because I'm condensing it to one fourth the size out here with 800 becomes 200 height 600 becomes 150 so that's 800 by 4 600 by 4 simple calculation simple mathematics all right hmm so right the alternate text I've set to improved uh, you decide what you want to keep it okay now the pick big is ensuring that the the width is zero for all the images since the original width is uh, 800 setting it zero will make sure that it disappears completely right I've set the position absolute now the reason why I've set it to absolute is when the transition is being applied if it's actually set to absolute when it expands or collapses it does not disturb the adjacent elements otherwise it would uh, push the adjacent elements away so to avoid that it's important that when uh, you know the expansion of uh, the pick pick is actually happening it should not ripple to the adjacent images or the elements right now notice uh, that I've used a Z index of 10 now what happens when I hover over uh, you know the smaller thumb and the bigger thumb actually undergoes a transition and increases it, its width to a 800 that is happening out here uh, the Z index 10 ensures that no element should obstruct should, every element should be under it the uh, corresponding bigger image and not over it now this value 10 could even be a higher value depending on whether any surrounding elements are at a risk of obscuring the original bigger image if it is then you should use a bigger z index but in our example since we have just three you know actually six elements so a, a number 10 is big enough z index controls the um, the layer depth so what goes underneath what comes in the front so send to back bring to front kind of options that we use in Photoshop and some other editors so Z index actually uh, works in the similar works in the same way in a similar fashion right now if you notice we have a class pick and then hover out here so basically whenever somebody hovers over the pictures you notice uh, let me refresh Oh, I think I need to reset the. Let me just save it first. Let's refresh. Okay. Now you notice when I hover over the thumbs, it actually shrinks that little bit. Why is that happening? That is happening because of the next rule out here. Here, right. So when somebody hovers over the picture, you know, the smaller thumb which has a class of pick when you hover over it I'm throwing in a border of 3px but I'm also ensuring that the border is going inside through the box sizing CSS3 property which has been set to a value of border box now that ensures that the total width remains the same the picture shrinks because the border goes in ideally always the border goes out in which case the image size is never disturbed or never altered or never condensed but in our example since I'm ensuring that the border of 3px is going in by uh, you know 3px the image is shrinking by 3px on all the four sides and that's causing that image to shrink that little bit the border is not rendering simply because I've set the shade of the color to a transparent so you get the effect that the you know the image is actually you know the uh, the thumb is actually shrinking just that tad just a little bit right so just nice subtle uh, effect 
letting you, you know that this is the sun that's been hovered upon. Very cool. Right. Without the border actually rendering. So, see, the corresponding bigger image is zooming while the thumb is actually shrinking. Just a tad. And the, uh, you know, this is the original image. The, the bigger image is the original image, it was, which was actually hidden. So, let's see what exactly is causing the transition. Now, this is the most important rule of them all. It's an adjacent selector, which says, when class pick is hovered upon, whichever uh, you know pick is actually hovered upon the corresponding class pick big so if this image is hovered upon this should be the adjacent element so the adjacent element or the class pick big should undergo a transition of width over 400 milliseconds and the width from a zero should become 800 which is the original width of all the three images in our example right so it's a simple width transition people that's happening over less than half a second 500 milliseconds is half a second right now not only can you use uh, box shadow you can also use multiple box shadows comma separated it's allowed in CSS that's ex exactly what I've done I first use uh, a 2px of silver box shadow that's acting like the border and then you see there is no blur value out here so you get a hard edge a two peaks of hard edge this looks like a border and the adjacent box shadow which has a blur value 5 px and a spread of uh, 4 px with a shade of uh, uh, triple three and shows uh, that subtle box shadow all around okay so uh, hash 333 box shadow that's a little slight blurriness up you know outside the 2px of silver box shadow so multiple box shadow, dual box shadows out here okay so when you hover over this because of this class this is affected in a way which ensures that uh, the SRC or the image W1 the three images W1, W2, W3 when you hover over W1 this image which had actually been rendered invisible because of the width set to a zero expands back to its original size see when the width increases the height obviously increases too together so that ensures that it uh, expands back to its original size so this is this rule is expansion of the invisible bigger picture or the original picture back to its original size and the transition of a width is happening over less than half a second so very simple CSS people the CSS is just one two three and four rules so let me go over it uh, quickly there are six images here uh, all of them are of the same size because the SRC here and here is the same here and here is the same here and here is the same I have three pictures in my local site folder all of the same size 800 600 now what's causing one to become like a thumb and the other to become invisible is simply because of the classes pick and pick big pick causes it to shrink to one fourth the size pick big causes it uh, to have or acquire a width of 0 px that makes it invisible when you hover since a border of 3 px is thrown inside because of the box sizing property every s smaller thumb shrinks just that little bit just a tad since the border is transparent it does not render okay now this is an adjacent selector so whichever pick or whichever thumb is hovered upon the corresponding invisible bigger picture or the original picture undergoes a transition of width that brings the width back to 800 height will always automatically increase along with the width and the invisible bigger picture shows up in its full size we have used multiple box shadows out here right so that uh, ensures uh, a nice border and a nice uh, drop shadow all around okay so let me save the document up once again bring the browser up and just before I end the tutorial let me
take a browser preview finally so you see the shrink of the uh, the thumb as the adjacent bigger image appears in its original size which had been rendered invisible up front so people I hope you found this information useful tell me how you found it by thumbing the video up or thumbing the video down by commenting please let me know because I'll really love to hear from you whether it's positive or negative really doesn't matter I love to get a feedback from you so do let me know you have a good day bye bye peace